Well, I was in uh, you have Southern California in 1967, which is after the, uh, the uh, Kentucky Colonel was disbanded. And I was, uh, no one really came to town um, from, he was in, in Fort Worth, Dallas area. And uh, the bus bus broke down, the bluegrass breakdown broke down. <laughs> <laughs> and so he, he, he was playing a place called the Ash Grove, a very popular uh, folk music club. <laughs> Pearl used to hire the Stanley Brothers and Bill Monroe and Flat and Scruggs. And anyways, Bill had been out there before, and I'd known Bill. <coughs> and uh, so I get a call from Ed Pearl. He says, Bill is, uh, Roland, he says, Bill is coming, is flying in with his new fiddler, Byron Perline. And uh, we need a band, because the band's going to stay with the bus. I said, he says, can you help him out? I said, well, uh, he says, I said, well, yeah, I'll play the guitar. Yeah, sure. He says, fine. He says, you know of a bass player? I says, well, let me call my brother Eric. Maybe he can do it. So I called Eric. He says, oh, I'd love to do it, you know. So, uh, and somebody got, I believe, uh, I, I, want, I wanted to ask this Doug Dillard last week. I think Doug Dillard was the banjo player. And this started on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and, and Friday, the band came in. So he settled up with everybody, you know, and, uh, and and how much did he settle up with you for in those days? <laughs> I don't, I don't remember what I got. But uh, good job. Anyways, uh, I, I just don't remember. But uh, he asked me to stay on. I says, well, you, you know, you have a guitar player. He says, uh, yeah, but we need some help. <laughs> so I thought I'd stay on. So Friday night we play, and uh, the band was the Byron Berline, Lamar Greer. Bill Monroe, James Monroe, and um, Doug Green, Ranger Doug, was the guitar player, and uh, and myself. And it turns out I've spoke, uh, I've asked Doug Green about this, and it was true that he was going back to college. When he got back, he was just helping out on that trip. But Lamar Greer told me he says he asked me what I, what I was doing. I says, well, I was playing electric bass in the country music dance band. Yeah. And uh, he says, oh, he says, you need to come to work with Bill. And I says, no. Well, anyways, this is before. Uh, he, he says, you need to come to work with Bill. He says, he, when we get back to Nashville, we're, we're going to need a, a guitar player. He says, Doug Green's going back to Michigan. OK. So I thought, hmm. So after the show that night, I asked, uh, told got Bill uh, over in the office, in Ed Pearl's office. And I says, I uh, hear you're going to be looking for a guitar player. He says, yeah. Uh, I said, uh, well, um, uh, you know, I played for you for the last couple of days, and you know what I can do, and and I know most of your songs, your tunes, and I could, uh, you know, I, if I hear you need a guitar player, and I could, I, I'd like to ask for the job. I says, I, I'm sure playing guitar in a real bluegrass band, <laughs> I could get better. He says, and he says, <laughs> it's funny now. He says. Well, he said, I'm not looking for a hot shot picker. I'm just looking for a man who just plays good rhythm guitar and sing songs and just work at it. He says, and he keeps working at it, he's got a job. He quits working at it, he's out. <laughs> I said, well, I'd like to talk. He said, well, let me talk to the boys. I found out later he did mention it with the guys, and they said, sure, you know. Uh, so I told my wife about it, and she said, uh, well, I said, I'll go out there for a couple months, and if I want to stay, I'll stay. If not, I'll come back home. If I want to stay, I'll send for you, which is the way it happened. That was in 1967. I started, my first uh, was May 10th at the Ash Grove, 1967. And uh, came out here, and I've been here 43 years, uh, ever since. Wow. Uh, how about you, Vic? Well, I, I had been working with uh, Jimmy Martin. Sitting out and, uh, we had had a party in the ways over the telephone. And uh, how did that go? <laughs> well, uh, uh, we had had a little talk about some things, you know, and, I said, and uh, I said, Jimmy, I think the best thing for us to do, I said, is, you know, while we're on good terms, the best thing for us to do is uh, you find a banjo player and I'll find another place to play, you know. Well, all right, Nick, that's the way you feel better with Jimmy, you know. I said, well, that's, you know, that's... <laughs> So we parted company that way, and as a matter of coincidence, uh, within 20 minutes' time, the phone rang. Now, I had jammed a little bit with Bill off and on backstage at the Opry. I used to go over there every once in a while. So Bill knew who I was, and, 
and everything, and he heard me play with him backstage. And uh, 20 minutes, the phone rang, and it changed my room. He said, uh, Daddy's going to be a banjo player, wants to know if you're, if you're interested. I said, you tell him, yeah, I'll take it, you know. I had told Bill on several occasions, you know, now look, you ever, you know, be a banjo player. I said, I'd like to give it a shot. So, uh, uh, James said, well, you got the job. So I said, well, okay, what's, what's next? He said, well, we're leaving Friday night <laughs> and going uh, in South Carolina somewhere, I forget where it was. He said, just be at the bus at such, such time. Bill used to keep the bus at the National Transit Company. Right? And uh, that's where we'd meet and leave our cars. And so I met him there and went on the road with him. And, uh, no rehearsals, no... <laughs> no auditions, no nothing. So the first rehearsal was the first night you got on stage, right? That was it. Okay. But most of you would have been familiar with his music. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, I don't think he would talk to anybody much if they weren't at least show some familiar. Right. Good morning, James Monroe. How are you? I'm Katie Daly. <laughs> And we're talking about auditioning for the job. Now, was your audition because you were his son any different, or did you, you know, did you have to say, Daddy, I'm interested in the job, or? No, I, my story was a little different. <laughs> I didn't know a thing about music. He wanted me to go with him uh, to fill in for the bass player. And I said, you don't know, you know, I don't know how to play the bass. He says, just keep time with your right hand and stay behind me. <laughs> so that's what I did. And, uh, <laughs> Didn't have a clue what a chord change was. You know. And how old were you? Uh, probably, probably 20. And how long did it take for you to finally work up the bass and all? Well, I started practicing real hard after I got embarrassed a bit, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> I started to really work on it, got the records out, and, and started practicing with that a lot, you know. But I didn't have a, a amateur life like these guys had. I, I went from straight on to the professional stage immediately, you know, without, <laughs> without any knowledge of what I was doing. So that was my introduction. So he taught you to swim by tossing you in the pool. Yeah, huh? drown, drown or survive one way or another. You know. Well, let's talk a little bit about life on the road. Now, you mentioned the bluegrass breakdown, the bus. Were you always on the bus? Were you in, traveling in cars, or how was it? And how, how long would you go out for, usually? Well, a couple of times we uh, had to travel in the car uh, because of the bus was not available. It was broke down. It was being worked on or something. I don't know, remember which trips it was. Seems like one of them was going to Hurricane West Virginia. <laughs> and uh, the, I don't know if we broke down on the way or if we left uh, yeah. Nashville. We broke down on the way. Yes. And finally got off the highway and got a car and raced to the gig. <laughs> Where were we when the uh, fuel lines froze up? You and I walked down the highway to find the place. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. Uh, Is that when we were going to Bangor, Maine? Yeah, it, oh, it may have been. We like to froze it. Yeah, oh, I know. The fuel lines froze up on the bus. You know, and it just quit. And we had to go find somebody or something, you know, and we finally did. <coughs> So you're out walking or hitchhiking? No, and walking. We hitched right with the truck, if I remember right. A, a semi pulled over and picked us up. <laughs> Felt sorry for us, I think. Yeah, I guess so. It was cold. Yeah. But uh, how about, would you go out for a week, two weeks, a few days, and be back to Nashville? Or what was the standard? I think most of the time it was usually a weekend. Yeah, a weekend. You know, festivals at that time, bluegrass festivals at that time were like, two or three or four days and you'd be that much time at the same place you know and, and nowadays you know you work friday at one and then saturday at another one so they don't like that mm -hmm. but back then you'd go to a festival and you'd be there for like three days well i brought some pictures that actually roland if you're on facebook roland is very active on facebook and puts up a lot of historical pictures and so I just uh, ran them off, Xerox them, and we'll pass them around. But we did see one that was at Bean Blossom, and you mentioned it was the new stage, and that you all had worked on it. Somebody want to come and get these? <laughs> and we would like to have these back, so as much as you want to sneak one out, uh, Vic's going to take those home. So, uh, But we hear a lot about the uh, bluegrass boys who had to work on his farm. Did any of you work on the farm? I did, yeah. James did. I didn't. Yeah, I didn't work on the farm. 
Stage. Well, tell us about putting up that uh, new stage at Bean Park. <laughs> Where are we here? <laughs> we first got up there, and uh, uh, this was funny to me after I thought about it. And uh, Bill didn't have any power tools at that time, and, and uh, he wanted to take the trees down. And he pulled out an old two-man cross-cut saw. Y'all remember that? Yeah. yeah. And he said, okay. <laughs> yeah. He said, okay, now, who wants to get on this with me? And I said, I'll get on it with you. <laughs> Listen, he about pulled me out of my socks and shoes and everything. <laughs> he had a strong work ethic, and he was a, still a stout man. And, and uh, But he knew how to handle those old tools. I thought I did. <laughs> so you were cutting down the trees and making lumber out of it? Uh-huh, so he'd send them to the mill. Right? Yeah, and, and load them up on a truck and take them to the mill and they'd come back to the plant. Right. Mm -hmm. Built the stage. And the seats out there, too. <laughs> the benches, yeah. Benches, right. yeah. <laughs> and the can of rusty nails? Oh, yeah, that was that was uh, Birch's <laughs> thing. They had a big old uh, coffee like can. A tobacco can or coffee can or something full of old nails that he had. You know, and he'd take them out straight and here <laughs> that was when I was a boy. That was my job, straighten out rusty nails. <laughs> he never did hardly find any new nails. I, I thought it was a wonderful thing if he ever bought new nails. You know, yeah. uh, that was be like Vic said, like a, a coffee can full of rusty nails. Well, I'd spend a lot of time just straightening those out. You know, and you have to hammer them until you get them straight. You know. And we're you're working with mules. I, I always think of him associate mules with Bill. He did that on the farm. Right. You know? okay. Yeah, no. He didn't buy a tractor drive after I got grown. I wish he'd had a tractor when I was a boy. <laughs> well, tell us about that. Well, that's, uh, I, I came up on a farm. He had me breaking ground when I was like 11 years old with a team of horses, you know. He raised me up kind of like he came up in Kentucky. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just uh, I'd have preferred a little better life than that. You know? <laughs> But uh, <laughs> he, uh, he was a good man to work for. And he, uh, he taught me a lot about farming. You know. We raised our own garden. And he had an oak field, uh, maybe 10 acres of oats, and uh, then we'd have corn. And had uh, hay. He'd raise hay for his horses and cattle. You know. So we, we, uh, we all had jobs there when I was a boy. And, uh, my sister had to have my mother you know, in the house cooking and all that stuff. And I had to go to the fields with my father. You know. And a lot of bluegrass boys would, in the old days would work with him in the fields. You know, people like Jimmy Martin and Rudy Lyles, they'd go out there and have so. him. And, uh, and Gordon Terry, that was just part of being part of the Bill Monroe outfit. You know. Was it actually part of a deal when we're not on the road, you're on the farm? Well, or not? He, yeah. He, uh, a lot of times if they came out to see my father, uh, they just won't come out to visit or something or talk to him. And so then he'd put you to work out in the fields. And, <laughs> and he, uh, if you want to talk to him, you had to go with him. He'd be working. So yeah. that's that's the way you'd get a chance to talk to him. You'd have to start working too. You know, so he's pretty smart that way. Yeah. And, and how late in life did he work that farm? Oh, till I was 18 or 19. All right, but I was born. I was raised there practically. But how long did he actually? Keep up the farming. All his life. All his life. Yeah. He had gardens till uh, probably a year before he passed away. He, I mean, uh, maybe two years before he passed away. He was still raised gardens, you know, for you know vegetables. He loved to do that kind of stuff. And, uh, 